And I would like to introduce one of our uh, great friends and sponsors, BB&T. And Mr. Chris Kieser and Tommy Brewer uh, are here today, and I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about their company, and not because uh, they asked to, but because I asked them to. But I've asked them to produce something that's really quite unique, and that is to give you an overview of all of the different products. And because of their financial background, this gives us ability to see the difference uh, on various products so we can go out and be making decisions. Because after we come up with a concept, we have to afford it. We have to be able to put it into place. We have to be able to know where the revenue is coming from, and we have to know what the bottom line is going to be. So with that aside, gentlemen, I'm going to turn it over to you, BB&T. Thank you so much for coming here and, and doing this for us today. And as you look at the senior living field or sector, it really comes out of the fact that in healthcare and in medical care, there are two continuums. There is the acute continuum, which is an upstream continuum, that you're actually getting better as you progress after an acute episode. You're getting better and hoping to, uh, your health improves and you end up back in the place that you originally uh, come from or your home. The chronic continuum is what we all know is a senior living continuum. Unfortunately, it's a downstream continuum. It's one of digression in most cases. And uh, we've been spending a lot of time talking about how can you curb that um, progressive march down. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> it happens, and we all have to figure out how we deal with that. Big fundamental shift in senior living. Is that the right answer? We don't know, but people are looking at it from a financial perspective, and they're realizing that the old model is not financially viable. So how, what component of a CCRC is financially viable? Independent living. What are we going to do? We're going to flip the pyramid, and we're going to have more independent living units and less nursing. It's, I have yet to, to fail to give the answer of I can find you money if, if when I ask somebody can they sell it, and the answer is yes, we've got 100% pre-sales, I can find you the money. It's when, oh, we're only 50% pre-sold, or we don't have, we have an idea, but we're not sure it's going to work. Well, that's a tough one. But if you're 100% pre-sold, or you think you got a concept that people can get behind, we can make it work from a structural perspective. It really is a market-driven product, and that's where we are today. It, it all has to work. The design has to work. The finances have to make sense. The problem is we're kind of stuck now with aging in place. How does that impact the finances of a CCRC? It's pretty material impact. People didn't plan for that. We need to plan for that now. We hope people age in place because we hope that they're able to hit that waterfall later in life than we anticipated. All the actuarial studies said someone's going to live in independent living for seven years in the CCRC. What happens if they live 10 years, 12 years? I think that there are going to be some communities that are going to struggle because they have not set themselves up financially to assume someone's going to stay in independent living for 12 years versus seven years. How are we going to deal with that as an industry? It's, it's going to be an important issue. One of the challenges we have is, is my nursing home has gone from 42 beds to 31. And from a consumer perspective, one of the things that's hitting us now is we don't always have room for our residents. If we have some acute care needs happen, we have to send our residents, if we're full, to another sister community. But from a consumer perspective, our residents aren't pleased with that. Mm -hmm. And that is happening. In the old days, I had a 175-bed nursing home. We always had room for our <laughs> residents. And we even held beds. I'm sure you don't want to hear that. Yep. But we held beds for our residents. So that's, that's an effect of the smaller, but it is affecting our residents yep. and consumer satisfaction. And uh, there was a, uh, a statistic that came out of the USA Today that I, I just thought was shocking, um, looking at the front of our of this big baby boomer wave, and that is the trend of debt per household. That right now, when people enter CCRCs, as I talk to uh, the, the providers that I, I work with, almost all their consumers come in debt-free. When you start looking at the statistics, debt for the uh, 55 and older person has climbed from, uh, in 1992, 30000 up to now $53,000. The 55-year-old or I'm sorry, the 75-year-old even though, has moved from $8,000 up to $20,000 worth of debt. So as you start looking at wh who are we serving, I think that 25% uh, that may even reduce of who we're going to be able to serve if, if all we're doing is focusing on the affluent population. Without question, 
10 years ago, I got a call about a for-profit senior living facility maybe once a year. Now I get a call about a for-profit facility probably once a week. The, um, the industry used to be dominated by the not-for-profits. It all started with, with religiously affiliated organizations that thought they needed to serve their congregations and they come up with a way to do it. Pennsylvania was a, was a fertile ground where you had a lot of different constituencies that wanted to retire in a, in a certain way and it kind of started and it bred the CCRC concept. Um, now we're in a stage where people think that the, the, ba the baby boomers are coming, we need a place for them to be, and there's some money to be had in those places. The subprime market has had a ripple impact on healthcare providers, and about a month ago, let's say three months ago, it was probably more attractive for a senior living organization to, to obtain financing than has ever been. We were at 30-year lows. I always like to use the example that a non-rated, an organization that has financial dynamics that barely are able it to pay its debt service, was able to borrow less than 1% higher cost of capital than Harvard University, which is the strongest AAA municipal borrower in the country.